if you want to build a project to identify any object could be animals in this example or mundane objects like we have here products on the table we have the salad we have the glass or we're building a software for safety reasons and you want to identify helmets or for an industrial usage you want to identify bottles or any type of object then in this video we're going to discuss about all the steps that are necessary to build such project hi i'm sergio i've been working quite a lot in the last few years with object detection i built many projects for different clients from uh, simple projects to detect mundane things to more complex projects that had to detect and count hundreds of thousands of, of objects daily like for example software to track and identify vehicles in addition to this i also built a full course about object detection so i went quite deep into the topic now let's see step by step how to do that especially if you are a beginner if you have just some basic knowledge of python and if you follow this video i guarantee that you will have a clear idea of what object detection is and all the steps that you have to go through to build your project and don't worry if you are just a beginner and you have no experience because with the technology that we have available today and if you're not afraid to get your hands dirty to play around to test new things then there is almost no limit to what you can achieve and the amount of projects that you can build how to detect anything how to build a project to detect any object i will start with the tools we have three different tools that will allow us to do this and i will start with the first one which you should be already familiar if you are here and it's the programming language python python is a must you know you don't need to be experienced or you don't have to you don't need to have a great knowledge but you need to know at least the basic the variable the for loop the while loop and so on how to make function classes so that you can comfortably later build projects without any struggle around the way so python is a must if you want to follow this video if you don't know python i recommend to start with python play with simpler objects and then come back here if python is already here for you then what is the tool number two opencv opencv is the most famous popular framework for computer vision and this one is a must if we want to build any computer vision projects which will do image manipulation image processing and so on third we need some library for deep learning so we put deep learning and then we'll get later more specific about object detection because deep learning is very generic in this moment but for the moment it's good to make things clear enough for you to understand what the three things that you need now let's put the first two python and opencv on hold and let's get into the deep learning because that will be the core of our project deep learning will be the artificial intelligence that we will use to perform our object detection in the, in the model and for object detection the way to go and you might have heard about this is yolo so yolo is the most popular algorithm since a few years already which started with the yolo version 1 when it was released in 2015 or 16 you only look once and it was so popular because it was very fast in comparison with the previous algorithm now yolo has been developed in the latest years now we have around version 11 and in a few months might be or even before you might see 12 13 and so on because the uh, progression is very quick it's, it's released by a company called ultralytics which is developing and maintaining this ultralytics and what can we do with yolo with yolo we can do actually not only object detection but we can do five different things i will quickly share you with you what we can do and then we dive deeper into object detection we can do detection what is detection detection is when you surround the object with a bounding box so let's say this for simplicity detection then we have classification classification will tell you what's inside the image or so classify them without giving a position so if detection will tell you there is a cat in this location with a bounding box classification they will tell oh, only there is a cat but without telling uh, the position so classification it's much uh, lighter model much faster but will give you less information then let's go to a heavier one segmentation segmentation in addition to a bounding box will give you the exact segment that's why we're segmentation so a polygon surrounding the object so for example if you have a person instead of uh, having a bounding box around the person you have the full segment we will see in other videos why is this useful more than object detection and so on then we have the key points the pause estimation pause uh, you might have seen some videos where there are the different points on the person and it follows tracks the person in different poses and then we have obb oriented bounding boxes where the bounding box is more precise it's not just a 
standard rectangle surrounding the object but also it follows the position of the object so giving orientation to the bounding box let's now dive deeper into the object detection the steps to perform object detection are quite simple and if you run object detection model you can do this with just few lines of code it's uh, almost instant the result that you get on your machine so with python we load an image let's say that this is the image what do we do with this image we pass this image through the object detection model so we pass this image through yolo and in return, we're going to get three different types of information. We're going to get the bounding boxes, which tells the location bounding boxes, the location of where the object is located. So we get coordinates X, Y, X2, Y2 to draw a rectangle. Then we get class IDs. Class IDs will tell you what, what object is that. And third, the score. So how confident is the model about that object? Let's see a quick example. Here is a very simple code that I wrote. As you can see, it's very basic. It's just 20 lines. It's very easy to read, very, it's English. So you, you have the bounding boxes, you have class ID, you have scores. Here you have the position of the bounding boxes. If you want to draw a rectangle, we use a very intuitive function to draw the rectangles and so on. If we run this code, that's the result that we are going to get. We're going to get as a result the bounding boxes. What is the object? In this case, bottle. And for each one of them, we see the confidence score. It's not so clear from this image because the objects are overlapping. There are too many objects, but you get the idea of what you what we have right now. And you might be wondering, okay, how do we get to such a result? How can the model understand what objects are in this picture? Why is not, if I put any picture, it doesn't show all the objects that are there. And here is the most important part that you need to understand in order to build your own projects. You need to be able to train your own custom model. We will see now a very quick step on how that's done. Whenever we download and play around with any object detection model, as you can see online, it's not any magic that you just write some, that the developers write some code and then these intelligence can detect the objects. But we have what are called the pre-trained models, pre-trained models, and mostly they are trained on two different data sets. One is Coco, is the most popular and then open images data set OED. What is the difference between these two data sets? Goko can detect 80 different classes and it's a data set that was created a few years ago to detect common objects in context. We have person, bicycle, car, motorbike, aeroplane, bus, truck and so on. So it's like the most common objects that you can find are all included in this data set. And for reference, this is the type of images that are used on this one. Oh, you can find this on cocodataset.org. If you want a major understanding of what this Coco dataset is, a container of 120 plus thousand images with 886,000 bounding boxes on the 80 different objects. And here for context is an example of the type of images that we have. Here we have, for example, just for the person. Now I'm showing from this data set here, showing some different type of vehicles. And all of this is what we use. So when we download the model to detect people, it's detecting people because it was trained on this type of data set. So that's why it can reach such accuracy because it used hundreds plus thousand of images of people in all the different possible scenarios like the other also objects. And then we have also the open images data set, which is also much bigger than this one. This one contains 50 million boxes and 600 different classes. I will leave you the link down below on, or in the blog post so that you can understand what type of objects are included in this data set. So OID 600 plus classes. Now, here is the nice thing that you have Pre-trained models, they can do a huge amount of stuff. They can detect almost anything you want with such classes. It's nice, but there is also a problem with this. When you want a model to detect anything that's specific for your own project, then when you take generic data set, the model will not perform well. It doesn't get the results that you want. That's why you need to create your own model if you want to build a project that works well. And here is how you do that. You collect a big amount of images. And this, of course, the topic might get, uh, might get very uh, deep depending on the complexity of the project. So it's very hard to estimate how many images. Could be hundreds of images for very simple scenarios. Could be tens of thousands of images for more complex scenarios. 
A very simple scenario might be oh, you detecting a specific object on a control light environment. So if you want to detect these glasses and only this model of glasses on a desk from a stable camera, then you might need just a very small sample, like hundreds of images will do the work. If you want to detect any type of glasses in any type of environment or scenarios that you need all the type of glasses, the more you have the better. So we're talking about tens of thousands of images to make something that work well. So preparing your own model starts with collecting images or even videos if you want to work with videos. So let, to simplify this, let's say collecting images. Second, you need to annotate these images. What is the annotation? The annotation is a process we've done with a specific tool where you manually draw a bounding box on each image where the object that you want to identify is located. So for instance, if we want to build a detector to detect classes, we will be annotating each single glass on all the images. So I'm drawing a bounding box to this glass on this image. What is this? This is glasses. Then we go to the next image. We draw the bounding box to the other glass and so on. All for the images that we have, this might be a long process if we have a lot of images, but it is necessary to do if you want something that is reliable and that it works well. Why do we need, we, we need this? Because we need to teach our deep learning model what is the glasses, where is the location of the glasses on each image so that it can understand all new images when we use the model to detect the objects. Third step, train this model, train. And this can be done again with Python. So we use some software, you take the image, you make the annotation, you do the training using Python and the deep learning model. And then fourth, you have your custom model that you can run like I ran the previous model before to show you the picture. And that's all you have to do to have your custom model. And here, of course, it's a very simple overview of the process. I can't go deeper than this in just this short amount of time. And if you're serious about this and you want to build a project easily in the shortest amount of time by following a specific path, I have a full course about this on pystore.com slash community, where step-by-step step you can follow the instruction and train your custom object detector. In addition to this, you have access to developers, people like you that want to build projects and I will also be in the community to reply to your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is all for now. See you in the next one.